Good morning. And welcome to everybody who is with us via our live stream on the internet. Thank you for joining us today to be together to pray. To be sure, we've had some very difficult months as we have struggled with this pandemic and everyone has gone through various different stages of, of anxiety and of grief and feeling the loss of various things. Some have lost loved ones, others we deal with the loss of our freedom. We deal with the loss of making choices that we felt so free to make. And so sometimes, I know for me personally, sometimes this feels like we're struggling with something that is just too big. Feel like it feels like it's a giant. And in scripture, we find many different accounts of faithful people who faced difficult situations and struggles, and they have truly as well battled giants. Sometimes, literally, in the person of David facing Goliath, sometimes figuratively, like the two blind men who struggle today with this giant affliction upon them, which was their blindness. And I think there's something for us to learn and to give us some inspiration to look at a few of these examples throughout scriptures and how they overcame their giants. David, who faced Goliath, was just a small boy. He had stones and a sling, and he was up against a trained soldier who was literally a giant. But David says when he faces Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, he says, You come with the sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. He overcomes Goliath, of course, we know by his complete trust in God against all odds. St. Paul is another one who faced a giant in his own physical infirmity. In Corinthians, St. Paul confesses to them that he has a thorn in his flesh. We never know exactly what the nature of this struggle is, but we know that it was in contrast to the spiritual heights that he had achieved as he says, to humble him, to keep him becoming, from becoming too elated. And he asked three different times for God to remove it. But he learned, and the message that he received from God was that it was not to be removed, by, but by God's strength that he could endure it and overcome it. In, the, in 2 Corinthians, the line that he received from the Lord is, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. There's another story I share, another account of struggle from the Old Testament that's about perspective and trust. As the Jewish people, after, they, after the Hebrews had been in the desert for 40 years and were preparing to come into the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey that had been promised to them and that they had waited and suffered for so long, they sent scouts to, ass to assess the situation in this, this land of Canaan where they were going to go. And they found fortified cities, walled cities, and well-trained armies of strong men. And they said they felt like grasshoppers in relation to them. One man, Caleb, one of the scouts, was not overcome with doubt in the face of all these other scouts who were who were feeling very intimidated. And Caleb says to them, Why fill yourselves with doubt? Have faith in God, and he will bring us into the land of milk and honey. Do not fear the people of Canaan. They have no defense against the Lord. He is with us. Sometimes we can become overwhelmed and overcome by the appearance or perception of our obstacles. But we can learn from Caleb or St. Paul or the blind men. Caleb reminds us to keep our eyes focused on the Lord as our helper and strength and that no obstacle is too large. St. Paul reminds us that of perseverance and trust with God's strength to endure and to overcome obstacles. These men 
who faced blindness. They were not deterred by their infirmity. Their blindness was not the sum total of who they were. They knew that they were more and they sought Christ. They continued to follow after him, it says, and then found, went into the house and he asked them if they believed that he could do that. And in all of these other instances where they had seen and heard about healings happening because of Jesus Christ, they confessed their faith in Christ that he would feel, heal them. They trusted Christ to heal them and they asked for his mercy upon them. So it was like they were in asking for their, his mercy. It shows them placing themselves in God's hands. And this trust is the key. As we have said before, these miracles of Jesus reveal the presence of the kingdom of God wherever Jesus is present. And so there is this physical witness of the fulfillment of the messianic promises from the Old Testament of the Messiah, of the healing of the blind and the lame and the mute and the raising of the dead. All of these things signal the Messiah, signal that the kingdom of God has come upon us. When we approach our challenges, like the blind men, like St. Paul, like Caleb, with faith and trust in God, the challenges may not disappear, and most often they do not, unfortunately, just vanish into thin air. But we can find new perspective and strength to walk the path. We can begin to see these challenges for what they are, an opportunity for God's power to be revealed in us and through us, an opportunity to trust God daily, for him to provide the strength that we need for that day, or maybe just even for that particular moment. St. John of Egypt, a fourth century desert father, said, many have been in despair about themselves, but the compassion of God has not forsaken them. It's a very important thing to remember. Many human beings, us, we have been in despair about themselves, but the compassion of God has not forsaken them. God is faithful when we are weak. <laughs> he never abandons us. It is in our weaknesses that we assume that God has given up on us, but we are just applying our own human weaknesses to God. He has none of it. As St. Paul learned and taught, in our weakness, Christ is strong. Whether we face a physical infirmity or illness or an uncertain future or even this pandemic, God is bigger than all of them. He will see us through the challenges if we let him. We will be stretched and tested as we learn and change and grow along the way. But in that outcome and in the struggle, we can say from our hearts, may glory be to God in all things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.